Well, you don't come to the United Center to hear Silent Night. Jim Cornelius, and it never gets old, nor does the rivalry between the Blackhawks and the Canucks. Between the benches, Mike Johnson and a lot of focus on the Sedins who do lead this team in scoring, Mike, but there's still that expectation for more. That's the standard they've set. They've been so good, so consistent for so long that you expect no matter who they're playing with, they're going to keep plugging along, be a threat every night, be a point for game players. That hasn't been the case in the month of December. They've hit a bit of a dry patch. Both Henrik and Daniel. Alex Burroughs is out. They have Yannick Hansen on their wing. Maybe not the ideal winger for them. And so for the Vancouver Canucks to be successful, now they have a second line to rely on in Ryan Kessler. They need that first line going again. To be a challenge tonight going up against Jonathan Taves. Taves was sharp and hosted to start against the Sedins and Yannick Hansen. The Canucks had a lot of eat streaks in last night in Dallas eight consecutive games with points eight consecutive games in which they had scored first and eight consecutive games in which the opponents had been held to two goals or less so we'll see how they rebound tonight after a tough travel day here from Dallas it's Teves in behind the net he's being tracked by Hamus. it'll come back to the point Chalmers with the shot wide the bad angle effort Trying to test the youngster Eddie Black early. It'll be kept in by Oduya. Good pressure here by the Hawks top line. Which seems strange to say that the fact that the number two scorer in the league, Patrick Kane, will be coming on soon. Hosa tied up along the boards. and That's Higgins knocked down. He gets up and finds the puck along the boards. Higgins continues to battle and up with the puck, Santarelli. The Exa backhands it deep again and now the... Canucks will try and hem Chicago in their own zone. There's Jalmerson, who's been out quite some time. He turns it over. The Santarelli shot is off the side of the net, and the Hawks are able to get it out at center. Versteeg's on the ice, and here comes big Michael Hans, who's testing Eddie Lack, the former goaltender for the Chicago Wolves in the American Hockey League. He's been here before for this kind of matchup, but as a fan... He wasn't backing down, though. He came out and said this is the biggest game of his NHL career. Looking forward to the challenge of back-to-back -back night. Tired team in front of him facing the Blackhawks. Here's Keith ahead and the red-hot Patrick Keane over the line. Into the middle. That shot is stopped by Lack. And a good job there to not give up a rebound with Keane on the doorstep. Our game plan brought to you by Tim Hortons, the official coffee of the NHL. And... For the Chicago Blackhawks, or the Vancouver Canucks, all about getting the pucks in for check. You don't want to get in a track meet. They don't have the horses to compete with Chicago that way. And for Chicago, you know the situation. You know that Vancouver was in Dallas last night. They got in late. They're a little tired. You have more depth, so you want to push the pace, make this game fast. That's when they're at their best. Third and four, fourth game in six for Vancouver against a pretty well-rested Chicago team who have not played since a win in Nashville on Tuesday, although this game 38 for each team. So it all evens out as the season goes along. Vancouver's done well in back-to-back -back on the road against teams that have been waiting for them. Five and two in this situation. So John Tortorella not conceding anything coming into this night game. Here's Andrew Shaw off the side of the net. As the Hawks generate a chance off the rush, this their third line with Brandon Sod on the ice, along with Andrew Shaw. Shaw stood up in front of the net by Weber, and the Canucks are able to clear it. You see Nick Letty, just another one of the defensive for Chicago. Good skater, jumps up, turns a three-on-three to a four-on-three, leading to the Shaw chance. Brent Seabrook bouncing it through center ice, tearing after it is Patrick Sharp. It'll be Taves on the board check, but the puck is slid back out to center. Duncan Keith with it there. Off the ski to Taves, and Sharp will play it back in. Taves after it, but Dan Hamhuis is there. He hands it to Seabrook, who winds and fires just wide. Five goals in six games for Sharp. He spins it back to the point. It'll be returned to Keith, and a one-timer is deflected up onto the netting off target by Patrick Sharp. You get a sense of the, already of the speed that Chicago plays with. Lots of puck movement, lots of body movement. Seabrook and Keith here. Look at the point. Shot goes wide, back up. Nice drag here by Keith. Opening things up, then teams Sharp up right in the wheelhouse and he puts it right off the backside of the net. 
and over, but they use the full width and depth of the offensive zone to stretch coverage and find teams in the, off for the offense struggle. Sedin's on the ice in the matchup. This time against the fourth line of Chicago, Joel Quendo likes to play a four-line game. And it'll be fired off the boards by Hansen down the ice. And there's Aduya. So Aduya and Jalmerson likely an offside there. Hansen just unable to reach that puck before it crossed the blue line. Jalmerson, Oduya, the shutdown pair for Joel Quenville. Well, that was close there at the blue line. Jay Scherer is with the call. Yannick Hansen trying to keep this puck inside. Oduya with a blind feed. And uh, it's very close, but Ty always goes to the referee, so... Another close call made correctly. Jay Shars, Ryan Galloway on the lines. Chris Lee, Mike Hassenfratz are the referees tonight in Chicago. Here's Keane. He has points in 10 consecutive games and 22 of his last 23. Only that guy in Pittsburgh has more points. Sidney Crosby with a five-point advantage over Patrick Keane. And you talked about Keane on the second line, second score in the league. He's not playing with Sharp and Hosa. He doesn't have the power where he's got Hansus and Versteeg. Makes what he's doing that much more impressive. Here's Chris Versteeg back in a Chicago uniform. After a few years away, a member of the 2010 Stanley Cup team. He battles along the boards and gets it back to the point. There's a pass into the middle for Keane up top. He'll flip it into the corner. And Versteeg will work there as back to the point. Keane across. Now flipped to the net and kicked aside by Lack. Karan Lalji will have a report on Eddie Lack in this first period. A guy in a tough situation, but he certainly doesn't give you the impression that he feels that. And he's calm. He's a, unusual for a goal. He's out there chatting before the game, holding court, feeling no stress about what was upcoming. And he had a big job in front of him going up against this high-powered Chicago offense. And he may have to weather a storm. We've played just five yeah. seconds shy of five minutes, and no shots have been registered as yet by Vancouver. One team skating right now, that's Chicago. And Vancouver just trying to find their legs. Andrew Alberts on the ice. Here's Sestito, and there's the first shot. Zach Dolpe driving the net, and Sestito puts it on. Antti Ranta, who has been a nice story for Chicago, replacing the injured Corey Crawford. So, battle of the backups here tonight. Not the usual Crawford Luongo matchup. Here's Seabrook, and the folks in Chicago feel he's playing as well as Duncan Keith, who's getting all kinds of Norris Puff again here, but so is Seabrook. It'll be Andrew Shaw twisting behind the net. He'll play it back to the point, and now Nick Letty's got it. He fires it, and that one deflecting out of play. And you see what Vancouver's trying to do in their own end. When in doubt, they are just collapsing all around Eddie Lack, getting five guys below the hash marks. They're going to give up the pass to the point and then try to get in the shooting lanes. But a little confusion there between Santorelli and Kessler. Kessler doesn't release to go out and play the right wing spot that Santorelli had vacated to play defense, giving Nick Letty the easy shot. And after the whistle, Kessler and Santorelli had a little chat trying to sort it out. Ryan Kessler wins the faceoff. Did not have a shot last night in the game in Dallas. And they'll have to do it all over again. An icing call against it's Vancouver. We got some nice dialogue going right now to the benches. Sestito and Bickle back and forth, having a little fun. Setting up a potential meeting later in the period. Always entertaining. Doesn't take very long for the old rivalry to get rekindled. Jack will take this face off. A clean win by Kessler. Ryan Kessler, the lone goal for Vancouver. The last time these two teams met, it was a five-on-three goal for the Canucks. They had the lead, and then two and nine seconds in the third period, Chicago stole one in Vancouver. Here's Kessler flipping it loose. He's got an open man for Higgins, and Ranta with the stop. Clear-cut breakaway for Higgins, who's been hot for Vancouver. On a great feed from Ryan Kessler and a better stop by Antti Ranta. Now they're back in with Santorelli trying to get loose on the right side. 
And it's Teams playing it back into Vancouver Ice. And Tanev celebrating his 24th birthday starts to break out. Through center, it's Hanson. And a pass for Daniel Sedin doesn't work, and it's chipped back out into the center ice area. Ben Smith trying to get loose, unable to do so, but it'll be Brandon Bolick sending it in. Fourth line for the block, centered by Marcus Kruger, who had the game winning goal in that two and nine second outburst. Kruger from the corner, looking to center. It'll be chipped back, and Bolick will try from behind the goal line there. So the scouting report might be to get as many pucks towards Eddie Lack early as possible. And there's some room there. He left the post early trying to sneak back into his net. He is so tall, he's got to hug the post. He's pulled himself back a little bit, and you can get an angle in the knee. And Brennan Shanahan probably gives anyone ever to bank pucks in from behind the goal line. Bowling looking to do so. Here's for Steve. He is checked by Brad Richardson, swept deeper by Hansu. Center for Steve. Look back in. And Lack makes the stop. Just a little flick on the backhand by Versteeg and a close chance. And now, scores on the tip. It does sneak through on Eddie Lack. And the Hawks strike first. Uh, we talked about how the Blackhawks like to use the entire depth of the offensive zone and look who gets the puck here walk of the blue line that's Patrick Kane and just wrists it in and I think it's Chris Burstee floating out to the high slot just gets a piece on it to so tip it between the legs of Eddie Lack right there engaged with Andrew Alberts Alberts can't tie up his stick as Burstee continues to move further away from the net and the Blackhawks get off to the one nothing lead so Versteeg scores his 11th of the year, and Patrick Kane has an 11-game point streak as he'll draw an assist on the opening goal of the game by Chicago and offside at the Vancouver line. The shots are 7-2 early, and Chris Versteeg has the goal that's put Chicago ahead here in the first. And Vancouver almost got the start they wanted Blackhawks like to engage their defense, and that's Roosevelt drifting up, and all of a sudden you hear the entire bench erupt, yelling to center that he's got Chris Higgins in alone, and Higgins as hot as anybody for Vancouver can't get it to go five hole. And then you get a better look at the goal here as Patrick Kane floating out, fighting time, just throws it in there, and a subtle little tip by Chris Versteeg to drift at five hole on Eddie Lack. And just like that, Chicago's got the lead, and Vancouver. So I've been outplayed a little bit through the first eight minutes of this game. Almost got their feet into it with the Higgins breakaway. And it's giving Joel Quenville a, an ovation here as they announce that he has registered his 685th win at the Nashville the other night. He is now number four on the all-time coach win list. There's Kessler scrambling to get to the bench on a change as the Sedins now check back in. Clearly, John Tortorella wants Kessler up against Taves. And Keane back on the ice once again. Most points at this juncture of the season for Chicago since Jeremy Roenick in 93-94 on route to 107 points that year. Versteeg, the goal scorer, gets it in, and now Chicago in the midst of a change. And a lead feed up on the right side gets past Hansen. Jalmerson unable to connect with Hosa. He'll get the puck again and try the left wing feed, which gets by Patrick Sharp. Black out of the net to play it, and now a breakaway pass for Hansen just misses. And this is going to be icing. Hansen got there, and Kessler whips the shot wide. It'll come around to Garrison. He fires it, ramped off a stick up onto the glass. Kessler a shot, and that hit the side of the net. This the Ducks now with a little burst. Kessler on the ice, and Hansen with Higgins. Seabrook up with it, off the boards, and it bounced on Garrison out to center. Hansen trying to get to the bench, 
didn't see that pass coming as Canucks in the midst of a change and Santorelli now gets out there with his line mates. That's probably to start matching lines. Kessler jumping, Henrik Goenbach out there now. Steal out with the second line instead of Chris Higgins, who got the early change as well. Now it's Sestito up ahead for Kessler. Good pass across, Andrew Alberts, and it's kicked aside by Antti Rantz. And a big hit there as Sestito ran over a black rocket. That was a huge hit at center ice on Michael Roosevelt. We're back in the Chicago zone. So Roosevelt takes the hit, and now he'll go after it again. There's Sestito after it on the fourth check. Hit there by Dale Weiss, and out comes Brandon Saad. Here's Saad. Can't get the shot through against Garrison, and now Jason Garrison will backhand it ahead for Dolpe. Zach Dolpe in front of the Canucks bench turns it over. Vancouver changing, the Hawks doing likewise as we pass the midway mark of this first period. With that little chip pass, Hanzoos into the zone, and Brad Richardson will send it to Garrison. Up at center ice. And a delayed offside, so Zach Cassian has to retreat. Now Keane sidestepped Richardson. He'll take that give and go play. For Keane, the stick side. Jalmerson on his backhand sends it deep. Alberts gloves it down. A season high for Andrew Alberts last night. Of just over 13 and a half minutes as Cassian crashes into the end boards. Jalmerson the lead feed just out of the reach of Bowling. And that's an icing call against Chicago. Zach Cassie going off the bench as he crashed in the boards hard and trying to get into the four check. And Chicago so dangerous with the puck. Even when you have numbers back, everyone in position, you see Patrick Kane dancing through guys. A little slip pass for Versteeg, and all of a sudden, Patrick Kane's in on a mini break. And one thing Eddie Lack's got to realize is Patrick Kane likes to shoot short side as much as anybody in the league. They attempted it right there again. Daniel Sedin with the back. Break out of a scoring funk. Hansen goes after Jamerson up along the boards. It's stopped there by Hamhuse. Hamhuse, who has been the busiest Canuck of late, the shot by Tanev doesn't get through. Now knocked down by Kruger. And he'll play back to Chalmerson as the Canuck four check was effective, but now Chicago's out. Kruger gets it. Big hit by Bullock. That was heavy right there by the right side of shoulder. Leaned on Chris Tanev. Santarelli gets upended but sends it into the Chicago zone. And now the Canucks after that early push by Chicago seem to at least be slowing the pace down. But here comes Taves and Hosa over the line. Marion Hosa and Eddie Lacks got it. A glove stop, and he'll hold on with Jonathan Taves on the doorstep. Christopher Steak, the goal scorer, and the Hawks lead 1 0. Seven save for Eddie Lack so far in the game. Here's the latest, and with more on the Canuck goaltender tonight, here's Farhan Lalti. First, John Tortorella says he doesn't want to use Eddie Lack like a regular backup, meaning that he doesn't want to hide him and select the opponents that he plays against. One of the reasons is Lack's demeanor. This guy's always got a smile on his face, and he's always got this childlike giggle. Uh, he's always confident, and he's seen this rivalry take place. You mentioned earlier when he was a member of the Chicago Wolves, he was here and he watched how the fans would get on Roberto Luongo. I asked him what that would be like. He says, well, let's hope I don't have to find out. And after the first goal, the reaction... We haven't figured out yet to just go with Eddie, Eddie, but he, he just wants to be at the center of a rivalry like this, guys. Boy, he was cool. There was no signs of any nerves prior to the game. Not often a goaltender will talk to the media a couple of hours before, but no problem for Eddie Lack, who got an interesting start against St. Louis in a similar situation. A long road trip, a well-rested good Blues team, and Lack went in there and posted his first NHL victory, so he'd like to duplicate that against a, another tough team in this division. Duncan Keith ahead, that will roll 
In behind Eddie Lack, Jonathan Teams on the four check, but the Canucks send it open. Rick Santorelli, a little pratfall there, gets up and the puck finds him, and now he'll send it around. On the far side is Daniel Sedin, who was chipped by him, and Kruger will play it back out. Andrew Alberts, Henrik Sedin, and that was cut off by Bowling. He centers, and Lack has to be sharp again on that quick shot from Ben Smith. And you mentioned the extended minutes for Andrew Alberts. Last game in Dallas, first game in a while. And he's going against Chicago Blackhawks under duress. Turns this one over. Right there, Henry trying to take it back to him. And nice pass from Bully out to Smith, one-timer. And that's a good save and a big save for Eddie Lack. Keep this at just one goal. As Ben Smith looking to get that sweeper through the legs. And he shuts it down just in time. Lack came in in relief third period last night after the fourth Dallas goal so got the final 17 and a half minutes to tune up for tonight Albert's back in his own zone took a hit plays it up along the glass to this near side sent to the line but held in by Andrew Shaw we were talking about it earlier today Mike how this Chicago team so well constructed lines one through four but here comes Hanson, Henrik across, and that one bounced on Alberts. Around it comes, and the captain's got it. Henrik waiting for the hit that gets knocked off his stick, played to the line. Alberts trying to save it, and he does. Good hold by Andrew Alberts, and now Hanson from the corner. He had a full worth of chances last night in Dallas. Might have been a different game had he been able to cash. And now Bieksa back into his own zone, and icing waved. Here's Kevin Bieksa, flipping it through. Through the booth on it, got it to Cassian after taking the hit. Now Booth to the other side. Two goals in his last three games, and the Hawks are out to the red line, and they'll send it in. Cassian taking a run at for Steve. Lack up off the glass. Knocked down by Hanzus. Patrick Keane's in the area looking for the puck. Versteek can't get it to him, but now Keane reaches and finds it. It'll be Nick Letty coming down and shooting, and that's blocked. On route, may have hit Tanev. Check that Yannick Weber with the block shot. And now behind the net, Keen looking for it. Weber trying to track him. Keen will bounce up high. Booth will try and stay with him. Now Garrison slows him down. Booth unable to clear it for Steak, tries to get it back, and now it's outside the line. Letty with some room to move back in. Changes gears, cuts to the net. And Lack with the save, and there'll be a penalty against Vancouver. And Yannick Weber slow to get up in the crease after that crash as Nick Letty went hard to the net. Be a hot power play. The NHL on TSN is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Yeah, Weber shake up on the play, but he takes the penalty right here. He's planning on the drop pass that Patrick Kane gets caught cheating on it, and Letty takes him all the way to the net, holds him there, and then you see him take the post into the neck. And he went down, but he'll have a couple minutes in the penalty box to recover as Nick Letty aggressively taking a puck to the far post. Well, here's strength against strength, a red great power play against the best penalty killing unit in the National Hockey League. It'll be sharp up top. Jonathan Teams, Duncan Keats got it. It bounced off him and shoveled behind the net. Keane was cut off and Higgins will clear it for Vancouver. Canucks number one ranked have allowed only 12 power play goals this year. Chicago have power play goals in 11 consecutive games. And a break here for Kane, and he can't get the shot away. 14 of their last 41 for Chicago. Sent back to the point, sharp across. Keith to Taves. Santarelli working there, and now he'll try and stay with Kane. Captain's got it. And takes a return pass. Andrew Shaw parks in front in his net presence. A big reason this hot power plays work so well. Keen up high. Teams as they work it around. 
Rolling puck in. No shot yet. Now it saves a blast, and that was blocked, and Hamhuis on the limp after getting in the way of that shot. Chicago was 0 for 2 in their first meeting of the year against this Vancouver penalty killing. There's Horsa. And it played in front for Seabrook. Couldn't get a shot off. And Lenny, who created the penalty. Down into the corner. Lost possession. And the Sedins will work it out. Here's Daniel to the red line, and he'll roll it in. Nine seconds of the power play. Letty with five remaining, and the Hawks without a shot. Marion Hose over the line. Weber back on the ice. Good move kill for Vancouver. Centering pass was blocked by Lack. Saad trying to get it out in front. Knocked away by Bieksa, and Weber has the stick break as he heads off after a brief stint after the penalty. Well, let's see if the Canucks can get a little momentum off that penalty kill. Here in the final 95 seconds of the opening period. Back in comes Chicago, Ben Smith. Along with Kruger, Bieksa off the boards. Kessler's bumped by Bolig and the puck stays in. Aduya sidesteps a hit and We've got a penalty as Bullock was tied up along with Kessler, and it's going to be Bullock who gets the gate. And he's going to get the interference call, trying to run a subtle little pick on Ryan Kessler up by the blue line. Does a good job here finishing him, squeezing him off, letting Johnny O'Dea get the puck, but it's this one right here. Step into him, kind of box him out. Kessler sells it well. And now Vancouver gets their first power play of the game. Bullock, the most penalized Chicago Blackhawk. And so the Canucks go to work 0 for 5 on the trip. They were 0 for 3 last night with all kinds of chances against Kerry Lenton in, in Dallas. Sedin's out there along with Kessler. Ham Hughes and Garrison. And here's Ham Hughes. Able to bounce back after that block shot that nicked him on the penalty kill. Sedin's in deep, puts in there with Jarlison, the Hawks win the battle, and clear it, under a minute left here in the opening period. Here's Ryan Kessler leading the Canucks in power play goals. Daniel pushed down by Seabrook. Kessler in the corner. Up along the boards, it's Taves, comes loose for Hosa, and he'll loft it down with a half minute remaining in the opening period. Cam <laughs> Hughes slowly ahead. Clock draining in the period. See if they can mount a scoring chance before time runs out. Chalmerson off the boards hard and to the line will be kept in by Bieksa and now cleared and that will do it. Off the stick of Hamhus. Shots were 10-3 in the opening 20 minutes and Christopher Stieg with that deflection beating Eddie Lack for the lone goal. one nothing after one in Chicago. Let's join Rod Smith and our panel. Well, Rod, prior to this road trip, most observers would have thought Roberto Luongo would have gotten this start. It is indeed Eddie Lack and a pretty good first period for him, all things considered, Mike. He did. It wasn't an easy situation. Tough travel day, playing against the best team in the league, the best offense in the league, and he steps in there knowing that he's going to have to be good early, and he was. Chicago carried the play territorially on the shot clock, out shooting Vancouver 10-3, and you watch all these saves for Eddie Lack. Not only does he make the save, but uh, as importantly, no rebound whatsoever, stopping the rush and offensive chance for Chicago at one and done, allowing his team to try to regroup, reset, and start over. So, Eddie Lacks giving the Canucks everything they could hope for out of their goal in that first period. And Brandon Bullock's in the penalty box, 38 seconds remaining in his penalty. So, the Canucks on the power play to start the second. Just three shots in that opening period. Chris Higgins, Tom Sestito, and Andrew Alberts, the lone man to test. Antti Ranta 
in the first period of play. Well, all things considered, though, Vancouver goes to the dressing room and says, okay, we knew it was going to be a tough period. We got out of it one nothing. We didn't really do much well, and we're still right in this game. Let's go try to win this 20 minutes and make a game of it in the first. Duncan Keith back in his own zone. Chalmerson just scoops it into center ice. And the Canucks will get organized and now move back in. Here's Daniel with a shot right on and a rebound that bounces all the way to Handy. Another rebound and Hedrick can't convert. So two big rebounds provided by Ranta. And the Canucks fail to capitalize. There's a shot by Daniel trying to center once again. Good pressure on this power play to start the second period, though, for Vancouver. And a shot is fought off there with a deflection in front by Kessler. And now Bolig on the ice, and the Hawks barely kill off the penalty. A blocker saved by Ranta, and Chicago gets it out. The three shots there on the power play. And back in comes Vancouver. Daniel looks for it along the boards. Hendrick gets it to him. Now a pass in front, and Ranta out beyond the blue paint to make the save. It'll be Albert shooting it right on. And it'll be flipped out at center, so a much different start to this second period for Vancouver. Caves has it knocked off his stick. Out comes Sharp. And that's cut off by Chris Tanev, and he'll flip it into center ice. Here comes Vancouver. It was 10 3 the shots. It's now 10 7. Santarelli along with Kessler now. And Chris Higgins has had the best chance so far in this game for Vancouver. Higgins finds it in the corner. Playing it back for Alberts. Sends it deep. Santarelli there. Higgins in front and Hanson jostling as well. And now it's Patrick Sharp with an outlet that slides to center. Albert's unable to hook up with Santorelli, and here's Taves to Sharp. Patrick Sharp and Anusa with a shot off target. Played along the boards, and away goes Higgins at center. Higgins will chip it in past Rosenbaum. Higgins falls in the corner, but gets up and has the puck. Trying to reverse it to Hansen. Get some help there as it's played back by Richardson. And a shot by Bieksa, and another penalty is upcoming against Chicago. And he lacked up moving from the net, and now he, he comes the off from the bench as the Hawks <laughs> touch the puck. <laughs> Everyone trying to get his attention. He says, I'm sorry, didn't recognize, and it looks like it's going to be Roosevelt heading off to the box. He just liked watching a much better start to he's, that second period. He's like, fine, let me see some action at the other end. And it's been a very good start for the first two and a half minutes for Vancouver. Hansen gets in front of that, gets away with a high stick, pokes Roosevelt up in the face, and then the cross check on Chris Higgins knocks him over. But that's what you can get if you make Chicago play in their own end. You can get them running around as Vancouver just did. Get a little momentum against a penalty kill that is not very effective. Surprisingly, the Hawks, number one team of the league, are 28 on the kill. Here's a pass out of the reach of Daniel. Chalmers in the corner. It's knocked away from him, and Daniel along the boards. There's Henrik. Kessler also up front as Daniel surveys from behind the net. Henrik tracked by Chalmerson. Ham Hughes across, and... Now it's Henrik with a slap pass tipped in front, and Ranta reads it. And Daniel looks skyward that he didn't do as much with that as he would have liked. Well, generally, Chris, they like that play from the other side where it's a forehand tip, a lot easier to create the angle necessary to get it up. And that one's just a little bit too of a, much of a redirect, so it's more of a pop up in the air, not a lot of velocity on it. And Ranta makes a nice save coming across to squeeze it. First seven shots of the second period all belong to Vancouver. Shots are even at 10 apiece, and the Canucks trying to even the scoreboard as well. Ham Hughes unable to hold it, and they'll reboot that center ice. Jason Garrison and Ham Hughes are the point men. Just over a minute remaining in the Roosevelt penalty. Here's a shot right on, another rebound into the slot. Hosa reaching for it, and the Hawks will clear it. Now Garrison, good right wing feed, flipped into the corner. But the Hawks able to clear past Kessler and down the ice. Here 
comes Ryan Kessler flying through. Great move, centering pass, and loose in front where the Hawks come up with it. And Hensus will clear. Good dash by Kessler, and now Kevin BX is at the wheel. On the tape for Higgins. It puts it towards the net, that bounces through. And Ben Smith with an outlet, and back comes Duncan Keith to the pass. Here they come, a centering pass for Keith well behind them. And the Canucks will try and expose this with a quick counter. It's a centering pass in front. Higgins plays it, wrapped it down. And Ben Smith finds it and fires it down the ice. Roosevelt out of the penalty box, and he's in behind the net, looking to center, and the shot goes wide. So approaching five minutes of the second period, Chicago without a shot, but here's Patrick Keane. Once again up high, Keane, great dish, shot, big stop, rebound, Kane at his very best. Hasn't been on the ice with all these penalties. He's fresh and ready to go. He takes it to one-on-one with Kevin Bieksa, one of the most aggressive defenders, and yet because of the respect Bieksa has for Kane, doesn't play him hard, backs off, gives him some space. He finds Roosevelt and then throws over for the empty net rebound attempt. But look at him dragging all three. Richardson, Cassian, slipping it to Roosevelt, and then when you're hot, you're hot, sliding it underneath Kevin Bieksa. The respect he has now because of his hands from the opponents, they don't even want to challenge him, giving him more time and space to make those nice plays. So a uh, terrific start to the period. Momentum off the first power play. Some chances on the second. But once Chicago gets back to full strength, it's Patrick Keane and a 2-0 lead for Chicago. Keane now with 20 points in this 11-game point streak. Goal and an assist tonight. Nick Letty ahead. A little trouble for Roosevelt. He gives it away and right back in. From the 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 Letty throws it to the corner. Back to Ricochets to the corner and Chicago will clear. So Patrick Keane with 48 points lead Chicago. 21 goals. One of Five in the NHL with 20 plus goals so far this season. Bieksa back in his own zone. Out of the reach of Taves and now it's Daniel with a nice outlet and Bieksa tried to jump up in the rush, knocked off his stick. Here's Jalmerson in, leaves it for Hosa. Sends it in behind the net and Teams after it there. Andrew Alberts for Vancouver. Teams centers. Hosa on left. Has to make a stop. Rebound and Sharp. Fanned on it in front after Eddie Lack made the first stop once again. Keen for Roosevelt and Seabrook the scoring play for the Hawks. At 457, that's made it a 2 0 lead for Chicago. Rod mentioned that these games have been low scoring the last six meetings. There's 23 goals have been scored. Here's Keane again, and Alberts won't let him by. And 87% of the last six games have been played with the score tied or one team or the other ahead by only one goal. So rare in recent memory to have a two-goal lead for either team, and that's what Chicago enjoys right now. Higgins flips it out, and Keith and Seabrook will regroup. Two and seven, and will be will they be together on the Canadian Olympic team as they are on almost every shift for Chicago? Richardson sends it wide of the net. Seabrook out, off Keane, a giveaway there, and David Booth can't get loose in the hot zone. Now Booth will try and chase it down against Duncan Keith. Arrives first. 
continues to battle. There's Dale Weiss up with it. Trying to get it back to Booth, and that's cut off by Andrew Shaw. And Seabrook out at center. That's gloved down. Knocked down by Garrison. Right back in. A shot scores! Zach Cassian with a hot shot that gets by Ante Ranta. And the Canucks needed that. Did they ever as an innocent looking play. Nice job by Garrison in the neutral zone to keep it up. And then you see it get off the inside of the left foot of Brent Seabrook. A shot that's heading glove side. Ends up back on the blocker side posting in. Is why Antti Ranta looked so bad on that one. Fooled by the deflection of his own defenseman. And the Canucks who started this period so well seem to sag after that Kane goal. Now right back into it. Seventh of this year for Zach Cassian, who was minus three last night. Jason Garrison draws the lone assist on the goal at 819. So once again, the teams separated by just one goal. Roosevelt ahead, Teeves to the attack. Here's Teeves a shot, and Eddie Lack holds on to that. So the difference now in the game. A goal by Patrick Keane, who has one and one tonight, and we'll have more from Farhead Lalji on Patrick Keane when we return. Sidney Crosby continues to lead the scoring derby, but Patrick Keane making it interesting, and with more on number 88, here's Farhan. Chris, as we go back to last year's Stanley Cup playoffs, Patrick Kane really struggled to find any offense until late in game four of the Western Conference Final against the Kings, when Joel Quinville reunited him with Jonathan Taves, and that really has been the story for Kane throughout much of his career, but not this year. They've been apart for 28 straight games, and Kane says he likes it. He said when he played with Taves, he found that Taves always had the puck, and he just let him do the dirty work. This year, Kane's got the puck more. He's playing defensively, and he's He's finding he's playing a much more effective 200-foot game, and he's just got the puck more. He's been much more effective at both ends of the ice as a result. Been the suggestion that the puck probably on the stick of Patrick Keane so far this season more than any other player in the National Hockey League. It'd be hard to argue if you watch Chicago with any regularity. And the fact that you get away from Taves' line, you might be seeing the second checking unit, the second pair of defensemen, slightly better matchups that Patrick King to take advantage of as well. Well, we all know what he can do with the puck, but it's amazing how the puck finds him as it did on the rebound for the second Chicago goal. But Vancouver gets a big one from Zach Cassian to close the gap. Here's Chalmerson at the line. He'll tee it up and fire. And that one looked like it got through Santorelli with a dish to the left wing to get it out of there. And Higgins sends it deep. Ducks are changing as we approach the midway mark of the second. Here's Henrik down in behind the Chicago net. In a battle, gets some help from Daniel. And Bola gets back there to flip it out. Zach Cassian with the goal, and there's a constant debate in Vancouver about who should be playing with the Sedins, and John Tortorella doesn't want Cassian to... Right shotgun with the Sedins, but uh, a lot of people wonder if he would be a, a good fit in the absence of Alex Burroughs. Here's Hendrick inside the line. Yannick Hansen in that position right now with the Sedins. Sends it back to Bieksa. His shot off a Blackhawk ride. Daniel to Hendrick. Back up top and across for Alberts. Here's Alberts trying to sift it through and Hansen for the whack at the bouncing puck. Bruce play it at the center ice. Another push here by Vancouver. And now the Sedins will check out. Vancouver with a 10-4 shot advantage in the second period. 10-3 shots for Chicago in the first. And another one by Booth will be stopped by Ranta. It's 2-1 Blackhawks here midway through the second. Saved by Antti Ranta here. David Booth on the wrister, drives the front of the net. He actually got up shaking that hand off, his blocker hand flexing it on his way to the bench. And the new backup right here, Jason LaBarbera, <laughs> recently added to the Chicago Blackhawks as if Corey Crawford's out, 
Nikolai Javi Bulan out, and so far we're having a nice little dialogue during this game as he is admiring the way his new team plays, a far cry from what he saw at Edmonton some nights. Looks like he wants a headset. <laughs> He's ready. Here's David Booth trying to center. Shot is snared by Ronta with some traffic in front. Brad Richardson trying to cause a little disturbance in front of the Blackhawk net. Well, the defensive core, Mike, has been depleted in Vancouver as the goaltending has been in Chicago. He knows where to find the camera. He knows what's going on. He loves it. <laughs> we, were getting, we were laughing and early. Came up for warm up. He's got all his Edmonton gear on, his Edmonton mask with a little sticker, a Chicago Blackhawk sticker you probably buy for 45 cents at the, at the store. That's all he's got right now available. As he just got here today, we saw him jump out of a cab, and that's the. The nature when you come to a new team, you're in the hotel, you don't have your car, you don't have your clothes, you're just trying to figure out what's going on. And the most comfortable time you have is when you're actually at the rink. Here come the Canucks, a shot by Dolpy, and a glove save by Ranta, and he's probably more familiar with yeah. a lot of the Canucks, and certainly Roberto Luongo, than he is with most of his new teammates. Yeah, a lot of guys came over from Vancouver and said hello. Roberto Luongo and him had a nice little chat during warm-up as the goaltenders union remains strong, no matter who team you're playing for. And Roberto Luongo also on the other side of me, another guy who doesn't find himself over on the bench very often, but happy to have a night off after a late one in Dallas that they got in about 2 in the morning, and he knew coming in it was going to be a tough night for his team. Although he enjoys the challenge of playing against Chicago. He's not tweeting down there, is he? No, no phones allowed. Torch doesn't like the, the phones during, uh, yeah, during that, the games. That wouldn't go over. No. Well, this Christmas Eve, the holiday tradition continues with Sports Center Year in Review, presented by PokerStars.net. Jen and Dutch count down the top 10 highlights, low lights, sound bites, and sports stories of 2013. Tune in this Christmas Eve, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on TSN. 8.08 remaining here in the second period. Patrick Keane made it 2-0. Zach Cassian scoring for the Canucks to get them within one. Chris Tanev on his 24th birthday. Playing it ahead, and Kessler looks left wing. Finds Higgins. Back across it goes, and that's an easy stop for Ranta. And we'll check in with Rod Smith. You can sense a more positive attitude on the Vancouver bench as now they are engaged in this game after that Cassian goal. And right now, shooting the Blackhawks 14 to 4 here in the second period. Longer you stay in it, the more yeah. you forget about exactly right how tired you might have been when the evening started. Marcus Kruger lofting it in. Benny Black as Brandon Bullock crashed in on that little alley oop pass from Marcus Kruger. Big stop for the young goaltender now. Alberts diving, slowed it up, and then has to retreat in a hurry. Fourth line for Chicago. Pin do some damage offensively. 11 goals between the fourth liners. And although that, that doesn't sound like a lot, that's. A pretty good contribution. Not many teams can uh, boast that. Not only the goals, but the trustworthiness of Kruger. Do not need to hide that line in any situation. Keane checks back in with Bruce Stieg at the point. Duncan Peek into the slot, knocked away from Hanzus. Dale Weiss was nearly away. Have to be wary of this guy. Keane again with a dish to Bruce Stieg, knocked away by Alberts. And now flipped ahead, and David Boost chasing after it. The other seven on the ice, Seabrook beats him to it. And now Keane to Versteeg, dropping it back. 88 to Duncan Keith. Keith in deep, looks to center, and it bounced on Versteeg, loose in front of the net. Now Keith after it again. Puck bounces to him. 
And Keen quickly into the corner. There's Versteeg. He is Chuck Garris. He's going to go off. As the Canucks play it, and Jason Garrison will be penalized for the trip with 6.07 left in the second. You see it. Kane Versteeg start exchanging, throwing the puck around the offense zone, and Jason Garrison here just gets caught on the chop. Versteeg with a mid crossover. Knocks him over, easy trip to call. And just prior to that, here you see Bullock's chance and tries to go all the way across the front of the net, not able to pull it wide enough to get it around Eddie Lackey. He's moving a little too quickly. And too close to Lack there to finish the move to the backhand side. So Taves, Keen, Shaw, Keith, and Sharp. Duncan Keith leading the Hawks in assists with 29 on the year. Back between he and Seabrook, 51 assists between that defensive pair. Battle there by Tanev, and he's able to split the defense and send it down the ice. The one thing you notice about Chicago, that's that old adage, best players have to be your best players, and in Chicago they are just about every night. All of the big names are red hot at the moment, including Keith, shot right on, and the rebound got by shot, and the Canucks are able to clear. It's amazing when you watch them play live or just look at their stat sheet. Look at their big six, Sharp, Taves, Kane, Hosa, Keith, and Seabrook. And every night, those guys bring it. Every night they're on the score sheet and lead their team, and that's what makes this team as good as it is. There's a guy trying to break through as one of the top guns, Brandon Saad, who's been up and down the lineup with injuries. And Saad, dangerous in his own right, the candidate for the U.S. Olympic team, comes across to Seabrook. It'll be played back for Letty, and his shot knocked down in front of the net. It'll be Daniel Sedin taking over, wires it off the glass, but Seabrook holds it in. Got it to Hosa. Letty once again with a half minute to go in the power play. Seabrook, and the shot is blocked, and Alberts will clear. So Nick Letty back to organize one more power play attack with Garrison in the box. A dozen seconds to go. Seabrook sends it in. Versteeg on the far side. Tanev lost his footing. Versteeg centers, but... Saad can't field the pass. And now Tanev has trouble with the bouncing puck. Penalized player Garrison has returned. One shot for the Hawks on the power play. On two minutes. to the lead. And, and yes, men out there. <laughs> got three defensemen in his wow. pass confusion. And do they have them? And they got them. They do have them. But you know what? We're not to rewind that because they do have 3D. They might only have two forwards. Joel Brendel upset. I look down and there were players. Seven or eight were on the ice at one point. And after a kill, it'll be a power play Vancouver when we come back. Some confusion at the end of the power play. You can do the math right there. There are six guys for Chicago on the ice. Couple changing, but still way too early in the jump. In fact, one more jump to make it a full seven on the ice <laughs> at one point. And yet Joel Quenville, ever the coach, thought he should debate the merits of that too many men call. And you have to be sharp at the end of power plays. Lines are not your normal rotation. Call out your changes and some confusion. Certainly on the defense where they had three guys out there playing the blue line. So a chance for the Canucks to get even here late in the second period. As Kruger takes the shot in, that stings Dan Hamuse. Hamus in some difficulty down there and has to play the puck. He is in some discomfort. And and now we'll get control. We'll see if he defers or he's really going to tough it out and lead the rush. It's a power play. Always want to tough it don't out. Power play. It. Yeah, don't want to go up now. That's right. Daniel drops it. Cam will send it in deep. There's Henrik. Lost his footing. Garrison in after it. Canucks on their third power play of the game. They've had three shots in each of their first two, but have yet to register the power play goal. Pass in front for Kessler and a good check there by the always defensively reliable Jonathan Taves. And Hamu still out there, so none the worse for wear. Santarelli has checked in with the goal scorer Cassian, and they go to work. 
Here's Zach Cassie down the right side. Santorelli plays it around. And now left along the board for Higgins. Leaned on by Seabrook. And now Seabrook knocks down Santorelli. It'll come back to the point out of the reach of Bieksa. And out to center. Kevin Bieksa. Higgins trying to get it over the line. And the play is offside with 30 seconds left. <laughs> John Tortorella with a short fuse for that power play as he immediately rolls the Sedins back over the bench. 30 more seconds late here in the second period trying to get his number one unit one more time. But John Tortorella has been coaching hard tonight. He's been trying to get his guys engaged in this game, trying to be encouraged, push and prod. And what would be a tired group to stay in this game, stay with it as they're just down one. Interesting comment before the game to Fire Logie about these points showing up in April if you can steal some hard-earned points in a tough building under tough circumstances. They can pay big dividends for you. Vancouver is not the kind of team anymore in the Western Province that can afford to throw away any games as they are down near the playoff bubble. Good outlet there by Saad. Away goes Smith. Bickle back on the ice out of the box. Smith swoops in! Oh, what a great stop that was by Eddie Lack. It would have been a highlight reel goal for Ben Smith and a penalty on that dash by the young winger. And the Hawks will get a power play. What an effort by Ben Smith. Bickle jumps out of the box, turn a three on two. Henry's gets caught playing at that. Look at Eddie Lock stretch it out as Ben Smith goes all the way across the net. And those long legs doesn't even have to really make an awkward move. Just stay with it, stay with it. One extra shove and keeps it flat so there's no five hole available. What a save and a big one here with a couple minutes left in the second period. So Kessler taken down on the chop, but it came after the brilliant stop by Eddie Lack. Where that added height, able to stretch it out. You see that second effort, little shove to get a bit more across to take it away. Well, they are the number one penalty kill unit in the league, but you don't want to give Chicago too many chances. Duncan Keith, now Taves, under 90 seconds left in the period. The next trying to keep it at least a 2-1 game. That was the third goal, the backbreaker last night in the second period by Dallas. That made it 3-1, Keith. And Sharp exchange passes at the line. Duncan Keith, a shot, and that hit. That got Shaw Andrew right in the Shaw. midsection. And Shaw looks like he one minute, One minute. You want to be in the power play with all those guys, you got to hang in front of the net. And you're going to take some like that. Now Letty leads the rush, hosts a bump by Piexa. Cam Hughes fires it around, and this one will slide 200 feet with 40 seconds left in the period. And now aggressive Bullet checking there by Higgins to slow Letty up. Half minute remaining in the period. Seabrook over the line. In deep for Brandon Saad. The X intercepts that. Up off the glass and out of play with 23.7 seconds left in the second. Andrew Shaw gets a lot of credit for how hot this power play is running because of his net front presence. He hangs in there and you're engaged with the defensive behind you. Tanev and he can't get out of the way as Keith tries to go short side and he just gets right in the middle of Andrew Saw. A lot of pads. He's checking the damage right there. And you have hardly anything on the front of your chest down in your abdominal area as far as protection goes. And he's trying to shake that one off, but that'll leave a mark. Tanev off that face-off win sends it right down on Ranta. And the Hawks have time for one last rush in the second. Great stretch pass for Stieg is inside the line. Sends it across out of the reach of Saad. The Ducks would be wise to keep it right down in that corner, and Garrison has that plan in mind as the horn sounds to end the second period. Canucks outshot Chicago 14-7, and through 40 minutes, it's 2-1 for the Blackhawks. Here's Rod Smith.
Yes, Rod, the Canucks are hanging around in this game, and one of the reasons they are within reach of Chicago, great penalty killing once again, the number one penalty kill unit against a hot power play, Mike, but they've done the job. Uh, they certainly have, relying on the special teams, getting it done at least as far as the penalty kill goal, and you can see they, why they are the very top of the league. They win all the little battles that you need to win to have a successful penalty kill. And when they get the puck, they do a very good job of getting first-time clears and not giving any group, but especially one as good as Chicago, a chance to retain possession and tire out defenders. And, of course, you also need some courage and conviction to block shots, not letting the puck get down to Eddie Lapp. And in 14 seconds, the Blackhawks will be 0 for 3 on the night. And despite having scored 14 goals the power play in the last 10 games, have only gotten one shot on goal on the power play tonight. And so the one goal deficit is in large part because of the good work of the penalty killers of Vancouver. So here we go, third period. Mike Santarelli and Jonathan Taves on the face up, pulled back into the Chicago zone. Shots even at 17 apiece after a slow Vancouver start. See if the Canucks can rally here. Against the tough team to play here in Chicago. Jonathan Teams with it in the zone. There's Hosa along the boards. Watch there by Ham Hughes who tries to pick his pocket, but Hosa gets it back. And Ham Hughes knocks him down. Up ahead, Higgins at center. Shark over to claim that puck. But Vancouver at full strength. And Shark for the backhand wide. Out of the reach of Tapes and Daniel Sedin up to Santorelli. Over the line, Vancouver to the attack. Santorelli, great pass. He has a shot, and that's off target. Mike Santorelli's got it off the boards. Looks for BX again. That shot off the skeet of Duncan Keith. And the Hawks flip it ahead. Brandon Bullock with the pass along the board to Cooper. And now Cooper follows up. Marcus Cooper from the corner. Backhands it in front. Knock back to the corner where Cougar tried to center again. And Daniel Sedin plays it out. And here comes Hansen with Henrik. Hansen with a nice move. Can he get a shot away? Got Henrik in front. And it's swept away. Now a shot. And that one blocked. Moving up was Weber, but he couldn't find the puck. And Chicago will skate it out. There's Ben Smith here with that quick dash in the second period. This time not getting by Jason Garrison. For Stieg, who opened the scoring in deep. Battle along the boards, and David Booth is able to bounce it down. And this will slide. Nice and waved as uh, it was Cassian who got there first to cleave to the hash marks to wipe out the offside. Cassian looked surprised by that decision. It looked like he was arguing. He's trying to debate. No, you got the call you're looking for. That's what you wanted. Still some little getting used to this is hybrid icing. There's Hansu's uh, centering pass. And the Hawks are on it. It'll be put deep by Roosevelt. And there's Keane on the far side. Most dangerous player on the ice tonight. Number 88 out there with Hansus and Bruce D. Yannick Weber bouncing it in past Ronta. And Roosevelt back to pick it up. Hawks are changing, so Roosevelt wants to buy some time till everybody's in position. Offside, and there's Eddie Lack out of the net to play the puck. A little touch pass, and Santa Lilly's away. They drop it off, and Higgins with a blast, and Rontas got that in this battle of backup goaltenders tonight. And there's one way to get through the neutral zone clogging of the Vancouver Canucks, and Marcus Kruger's figured out how to do it. The old flipper. See, a great one there to Bullock to spring him almost on a breakaway in the second period. And then here in the, in the third, doesn't like any options. Flip it up in the air over his head and let Bullock skate right into it. And it's pretty good hands out there to open up the lob wedge to tee him up for Brandon Bullock. That could keep the head. Chris Tan at center. Breaks up the pass intended for Sharp. And the play is offside at the line. Uh, this duo of Tanev and Hamus have done a nice job tonight. John Tortorella is trying to get them out there against Jonathan Taves as much as they can. Patrick Sharp, who is as hot as anyone. And Tanev, 
Wesley's game is growing defensively. And leaps and bounds this year under John Tortorella. And Hammonds does a nice job giving, not giving this team much time, this line much time in the offensive zone. Here's a blocker stop by Lack on a shot by Patrick Sharp. In Sharp has been hot. Five goals in six games, eight in his last 11. The Thunder Bay product has the puck centers in front to Taves with a whack at it to Eddie Lack. Paddle down, made the stop, and the puck comes out to center. Well, the Canucks have got the goaltending they had hoped for tonight from their backup. The Farhan mentioned was not at all going to, at least didn't look like he was going to be overwhelmed. There's a long lead pass. That's not going to be icing as well. And a bad angle shot by Daniel Sedin right on. Out at center, the puck bounces on Ben Smith. BX ahead. Daniel into the zone, and Chalmerson gets back in a hurry. Rugby teammates at the Olympics, the Sedins, and Nick Chalmerson, who plays it up over the glass, and that's going to be a penalty against Chicago. So Chalmerson got the wedge out. It got too high. And Vancouver will get their fourth power play of the night. Big opportunity here for Vancouver as Chalmerson lose control of this one. It's on his backhand. And he feels a little pressure coming to the inside. And up and over it goes. And not only do they have the power play, but one of the best penalty killers for Chicago in the box. Henrik Sedin digs in, wins that face up. Cleanly back to the point. Ham Hughes walks the line. It'll be Daniel playing it down low. Kessler tried the back pass. That's denied. In deep was Garrison to come up with a puck. Four Canucks were in deep to win that puck battle. Daniel's got Kessler down low. Turn pass now to the point, and it got away from Ham Hughes and back into the Canuck zone. And Hughes will drop it off. Here's Henrik. Kessler with speed. Knocked away by Keith. And Hughes to the left flank. And now he'll get it back. And Garrison fires. Great on loose puck. And Kessler unable to find the rebound. Knocked away by Duncan Keith. And the Hawks clear. So first good chance on this power play as the Canucks press for the equalizer. Daniel in the corner. Henrik behind the net. Kessler looking for room in front. That pass centering was knocked away, and now Hamhut. Dan Hamhus being tracked by Hosa. Garrison fires it, and Ranta got a piece of that, and it ricochets out of play. One good look for Vancouver on that power play, and it starts with getting the puck in the middle of the triangle, kick it over to Garrison, and he brings it in. Look at the stretch by Ranta there as the puck's sitting on the side wall, and John Tortorella. <laughs> would not be described as stoic behind the bench. He's gonna let you know always what he's thinking, what he's feeling. And the little conference there is whether or not that deflected off a Chicago player to go over the glass or straight out for Vancouver. And apparently it was off the back of the net and straight out, so the faceoff goes outside. Canucks lose the argument, so the faceoff outside the Hawk blue line with 44 seconds remaining in Chalmerson's delay of game penalty. Fired back in by Yannick Weber. Nice kick saved by BX at the line to hold the zone. Now he'll send it across. Here's Weber who's got a good shot. And he was looking for a deflection there. It got by Santarelli and all the way out. BX a chase back by Kruger with 20 seconds remaining. In the power play again, the Hawks have struggled all season long, killing penalties. Ranked 28th in the league. Four Canucks in deep once again. It comes out in front. Bieksa. And now Weber dishing it in behind the net. Been intercepted again, knocked down by Bieksa. Penalty over. Zach Cassian on the right flank, sliding it through. There's Chalmerson out of the box to make a defensive play. Cassian again. The Vancouver goal scorer sends it to the corner. Higgins creating a little room for Santarelli. Now Weber in deep. Back to Higgins who let it get by him. The Exa moves up. 
Canucks applying pressure here at Santorelli. In front, he gets a whack, and another one can't get it on. Anti Rocky. And finally, Chicago will get it out through center. They need a change and are going to get one. Cassian held up at the line by Bickle. Now Cassian moves forward. And back to get it is Andrew Shaw. Nick Letty and Roosevelt get things organized. And now Chicago advancing. It'll be Shaw over the line. Letty driving in deep. And a hit there by Bickle on the four check. But away goes Vancouver. Brad Richardson in deep. And that shot is off a stick and out of play. It remains 2-1 Chicago here. 7.27 gone in the third. Two contrasting teams tonight. The Canucks have been stingy defensively. This is the highest powered offense in the league. And look at the balance of scoring for Chicago, Mike, from lines one through four. And you see that kind of depth, and it allows the coaching staff so much comfort to roll their lines, get everyone involved in the game. Don't have to worry about matchups on the road. Part of the reason why Chicago is such a strong road team. And, and it also allows you to withstand any injuries a little bit better because you have guys that clearly can produce offense at the bottom units that can slide up if need be. And with the two goals by Keane's line tonight, the second Chicago line, you're ten at breaking a stick, and he's got to get to the bench and get a new cue. But the puck is arriving on his side of the ice, so he stays out there now. Falls down, and the pass picked off by Ham Hughes, and they'll work it out, and Tanev does buy some time to get to the bench. I'm going to say Kane's two goals I mean the second line for Chicago has more goals than any of the Vancouver lines. The Sedin line, which actually has been outscored by the Kessler line, so hard to identify who's yes. number one in Vancouver one, right which, now. Which one's which two, but by default, you always go Sedin number one, but not the way they've been playing lately. Here comes the... Top line for Chicago, and the sharp shot is stopped by Eddie Lack. What doesn't kill you makes you a fortune from executive producer Ridley Scott. A dramatic three-night event. Klondike premieres January 20th through the 22nd, only on Discovery. You mentioned earlier, Chris, just if you hang around, hang around like Vancouver is right now, they're still right in this game, not much going on. And they probably would take this. Here's for Steve. Coming out of the corner, driving through the net. Doesn't get the shot through. Keane trying to get it back as he battles along the boards with Santorelli. And the Canucks are able to move it out and ahead for Higgins. Got by him and Seabrook back to get it for Chicago. Andrew Alberts unable to knock it down at the line. Now plays it back in. And offside is the call. Uh, dangerous play by Andrew Albert. You talk about him knocking the puck down at the blue line. He's got to see there's no right winger in front of him. That's because Patrick Kane was out of the far blue line. And Alberts is up there trying to hold the blue of his own. If it gets by him, it's a two on one. Yeah, that's another one of those reads that we haven't played in a while. So they think that our second nature might be a little more difficult than you'd think. Tenth back-to-back -back road games for Vancouver on the year. Only Los Angeles with more. They've had 11. Of course, the Pacific Division teams. The tougher road schedule. Booth can't break through. And how about Chicago's record? Everybody talks about how good the Pacific Division is. The Hawks 8-0-2. Assad tries to bust in. Garrison stuck with him. And now the puck slides out to center. Here's Yannick Weber up to Cassian. And it comes back to Cassian. He's got a weak trapped inside the line. And he'll work it back. Vancouver in the midst of a change as we approach the midway mark of the third period. Interesting stuff going on the benches right now. John Tortorella eyeballing the Chicago bench, seeing who's up, who's up next. So we can make the appropriate call and gets Kessler out here against Taves. And a quick turn here by Higgins back in to Blackhawk ice. There's Santorelli in deep. In the corner, Higgins supports. Kessler after it against Seabrook on the far side. 
That pass is picked off by Higgins. He falls down, and the Hawks are able to clear it. There's Sharp on the move, and he is cut off. As it slides down to Eddie Lack. Hustling back to his Tannehill. The puck comes out in front. And Vancouver to the line. Does come out, but now Santorelli's away. Up for Higgins over the line with Santorelli. That pass got away from the winger. Kept in there by Hughes, who hit Higgins in behind the net with that high shot. Hey. And it's flipped into the Chicago bench. Now under 10 minutes left in the third. Still 2-1 Hawks. The Chicago Blackhawks have been on a torrid run with their power play. Ten straight games with a goal, and they've used that to open things up and get a lot of victories over that stretch. And that's on the line right now as they've come up against the number one penalty kill in the league, and so far it's the defense beating the offense. They're 0 for 3, and in a one-goal game. Big reason the Canucks have been able to hang around in this game. And pushing for the equalizer here in the third period. 21,966 on hand and not as loud as it can get here. Here's a shot that ricochets. Daniel scores! And the game is tied. 2-2 on a tying goal from Daniel Sedin. You said it, Chris. Just hanging around, hanging around, waiting for a break. Waiting for a chance, and it, they get just that here as a deflected puck comes right to Daniel Sedin, who does a great job getting it up to his stick as the shot is initially blocked, but Daniel selling out to get the puck back onto his blade. The excess puck kicks over to him. That's good footwork right there up to his stick and pass Ranta. Get a better view of it here. That's a quick reaction. Actually kicks it forward, handles it from backhand to forehand, and puts it in. 12th of the year for Daniel Sedin, Bieksa, and Henrik draw the assists at 10.48. Just the second goal, the last 10 for Daniel. And his fifth in 22 games, but a big one here to get them on even terms at the United Center. Under nine minutes to play. And now can they put the vice grip on that high-powered Chicago offense? Seabrook weaving through center, and he'll play it back for Duncan Keith. All right off the top of the show, you mentioned the Sedins. There's been some heat on their lack of scoring of late, and they come up with a big one here. And now Hansen's in. It'll be played to Henrik deep. In behind for the goal scorer, Daniel. Henrik along the boards. Looking for Bieksa once again. Across for Garrison. In the middle. Daniel to the net. Rotta took a look behind. It's still loose. But they get a whistle as the puck stays out. And now an airing of grievances. In around the Festivus holiday. <laughs> Feats of strength going on right now. As the Yannick Hansen is right involved in the crease. Gets a tip on this point shot. Isn't looking all by himself. And he tips one and it's dribbling through Ranta. And then anytime you poke and get after the goalie, you're going to draw a crowd. And Hansen does just that. A nice play by Daniel sliding up top, getting the puck down to the front of the net. And you see that it's still loose. In the Henry streets Sedin of Keith, yeah. And Hansen jar it loose right there and wouldn't have counted anyways can't poke the goalies pads out from under him like that but it's a good follow-up ship after the tying goal by vancouver now kessler comes out wins a face off tanev sends it to the corner higgins is there and along the boards pickle hands it away to santarelli at the point the shot changed direction again loose in front of the hawks on their heels the penalty coming are able to clear and I think it might be Kessler for the cross check in front of the net. A hit there on Cam Hughes by Bickle as the whistle sounds. Uh, Bickle had no idea. Mike Haspras in the far end makes the call. And it's a trip. Yeah. And Kessler's trying to get off the ice, but it's him. And you see a little push there in the back, and then and there it is, poking the heels. And 
That's a tough spot to take one. Only for their own other team's net fouling for a loose puck. No advantage gained, and John Tortorella begs to differ with the call. Well, you mentioned the power play streak on the line tonight. Ten consecutive games. They have not scored in 11 consecutive games on the power play since 1990. So Keith Sharp teams. Hosa and Keane once again. Check that. By Hosa, Andrew Shaw, who will play in front of the net. Santorelli with a near steal and now does come up with it. Chris Tanev's got the puck. Looking for Santarelli. Brad Richardson also out there. And now it's Teams trying to move it down into the offensive zone. Comes loose for Sharp. And that one hops, and he's got to scramble back with Santarelli on his tail. And he'll turn back, and the Canucks want a change of their penalty killing tandem. Allows Teams to set it up. Here's Keane. Back to the captain. And a pass out of the reach of. Duncan Keith back down into Chicago ice. Just one shot on the first three power plays. Nothing to show so far here into the second minute. That one near the side of the net. Bieksa gets it ahead and Hansen gets it out. Strength against strength. Seabrook ahead. There's Hosep. He'll send it around the boards to the far side. Saw it looking for it. Versteeg's got it. Now Hosa banks it back to Seabrook. Hosa looks for Lenny. A wooden timer right on. And Eddie Lack saw it all the way. Puck to the line. Henrik held up, but he does get it out. And now Daniel to work. And he'll slide it deep with 10 seconds remaining in the Kessler minor. Under six to go in the third period. Hosa will bounce it in. Garrison around just one shot on that power play. Two power play shots in four opportunities tonight. Nick Jalmerson trying to thread it through. Up moves Johnny Aduya. Garrison meets him. And now Santorelli's away with Kessler. Over the line, slowed up Santorelli by Jalmerson. And along the board, Jalmerson worked it back out. Here's Kessler following up. Daniels in the corner, watched by Saad. It'll come back to Alberts, a shot whip wide. And Johnny Oduya up for Saad and a backhand out to center. Another one of those flips down the ice, and Bieksa played it to the line, but not out. Bowling. Bumped along the boards by Bieksa, and he wins another board battle to come up with a puck. On for the first two Chicago goals, but instrumental on the equalizer here for Vancouver in the third. Kevin Bieksa. Boxer out. Molag along, shoot in wide of the net. by Brandon Molag. St. Louis area product. Hosa gets a hit on Alberts, and that shot bouncing just wide of the target. It'll be kept in by Keith. Up the boards for Teams. A couple of hits there by the Hawks as they try and generate a little momentum and get it back. Patrick Sharp comes back to take that away. Now Keith out of the reach of Sharp. And that is an icing call against Chicago. And it's been a quiet crowd. It's been a quiet team for Chicago for much of the second half of this game. Brandon Bullock trying to change that as he gives Chris Tanev a rough ride. Clean, just the way you want your forecheck to get in there. And That's twice tonight, birthday greetings from Bullock to Tanev. He's saying hello. We're getting older now. Finish you off. And Bullock's really evolved to a pretty good fourth liner here in Chicago beyond just the fighting. Added some skill to his game. He's got a few goals this year and even kills penalties on occasion. Shots even at 22 apiece. The scoreboard even at two apiece. And down to four minutes remaining in the third period. Canucks battling for 
an all-important point or even two here. And still with a chance to even this road trip. That Roughed up along the boards, does hold it in. Now Letty is after it, and a play by Pickle to Shaw. Here's Shaw, and a toe stop there by Lack, and a good one. Nick Letty trying to keep it in, but now Santorelli is loose. A left wing feed, Kessler with Higgins. Here's the drop, and the pass back across. Out of the reach of Santorelli, and a counter by Kane. Three hawks through center. Patrick Kane over the line. Shaw, cross, and he... Missed Roosevelt, who had jumped up in the rush, and now it's Santorelli back at the end of a shift. He'll get to the red line and dump it in. Nick Letty. And now across, Roosevelt and Versteeg, and it's Versteeg who will take it. Dump it in. Kruger after it against Hamhus. Kruger has it knocked away by Hamhus at the line. Kept in Versteeg a little... Knuckleball handled by Eddie Lack, who's had a good night. Canucks said Hawks are tied at two. The performer of the game brought to you by GMC Sierra. And this was an easy one as Patrick Kane once again has been putting on a clinic with a puck on his stick. Whenever he gets it, all of a sudden, everything seems to slow down. Everything seems to open up as he works his magic, dancing around the offense zone, gets the assist on the first goal by Versteeg. He scores a second one as well. And he has been by far the most dangerous offensive player on the ice in this game. Shaw on this faceoff against Brad Richardson in the Vancouver zone, and now Shaw is waived. So it'll be Brandon Saad. Ryan Bickle on the left wing. He missed 15 games with a knee injury. Bickle just back in the Chicago lineup after that great Stanley Cup playoff run for him. Seabrook up to Shaw, and it will bounce down to Lack, and he elects to hold on. Another faceoff in the Canuck zone. And it's the consternation of the coaches on Vancouver with the whistle there as Eddie Lack has had a very good night here. Kept Vancouver in it early when they were getting dominated in that first period. And just like he was before the game, he's been calm, he's been unflappable. You think about that huge save on Ben Smith late in the second. And now he's got his team in position to get at least one point out of this game. Canucks with a slight edge in the faceoff circle tonight, 23-21. Two of the best face-off teams in the league. And Seabrook back to get it. Seabrook takes a hit from Kessler, but got it ahead. And here comes Taves. Patrick shot. And that shot off the exa high. This looked like that puck might have been out of play. Looked like a couple of the players slowed up, but play continues. And Keith back in his own zone. Two minutes left. Here in the third, Canucks two minutes away from a comeback to register at least a point. Osa steered that towards the net, and now here comes Vancouver. Over the line, Daniel to Henrik and back on the backhand right on Antiranta. To the line, and Tanev unable to hold it in as Hosa sends it out. On the left wing, off Daniel, back in deep. Hanson charging in on the board check. Nice out left pass for Kruger from Chalmerson. And on the left wing, speeding down that flank is for Stieg. And Tanev played him well defensively. It'll go to Kruger. Henrik tracks him. Shadowing Kruger for Stieg, a quick shot wide. It'll be Chalmerson moving up, takes a bump from Hanson. Hawks are on it. In behind the net for Kruger. Doesn't work, and Ham Hughes will send it down the ice, and they're going to wave icing off as Odilia could have reached it. Into the final minute of regulation time. It was 2 0 Chicago, but Cassian and Daniel Sedin have scored goals to erase that two goal Chicago lead. Canucks almost, or check that the Blackhawks almost unbeatable when they've scored the first goal or led after one and two periods this year. Vancouver trying to put a blemish in those stats. Here comes Saab. And now Shaw, his shot. It went high off Garrison and went sprawling. And a race for.
for this puck. Here's Daniel down the ice. He's got a man in the open shot for Henrik, and he fired it wide. What a chance that was. Daniel to Henrik, and back comes Saad. An inside move on Tanev. Young Saad in the corner. And the horn sounds, and the Canucks, Mike, had one last look. <laughs> but they do have a point to, in the bank, and will go to extra time looking for another. And they had it. Three on two here. Daniel gets the puck after Seabrook had fallen down. Tees up Henrik, who's got the far side, and he just misses. Outside the post, gets it through Keith, who plays it actually pretty well for a three on one. And the Vancouver Canucks almost got it in regulation, but... Joe Quenville won't be happy with the way that his team played the last two periods, not able to dictate the kind of pace they wanted, not be able to turn any pucks over, and certainly the power play not effective. John Tortorella's got to be very pleased with the way his team came out and battled through this game. Understandably sluggish to start, but worked their way back in it, stayed with it, stayed within the system, and got a goal from the Sedins late to tie. NHL on TSN Overtime, brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. <laughs> They're still going strong late in the night. They're excited for a little extra hockey. And this is where the system and structure of Vancouver will be much harder to continue on. Bottling up the Blackhawks as the four-on-four -four hockey to suit some of the, the forwards the Blackhawks have to offer in challenging Eddie Lack. Same script for Lack as that first start in St. Louis. A tired team goes in against a tough St. Louis club, but he ended up winning that game in overtime. Mm. Antti Ranta, one of the very few goalies that looks small in the net. Compared to Eddie Lack, the other end, six foot seven. Antti Ranta is I mean, six feet tall, but a wispy 160 pounds or so. And Mike, it'll be interesting to see what Vancouver does with this, how they approach overtime. John Tortorella yes. mentioned uh, the shootout woes of his team that uh, bit them again in Minnesota. Whether or not they'll be more aggressive here, take some chances in overtime, trying to avoid a shootout. They get a first chance from Higgins on that rush by Kessler. Back comes Sharp. The other way, working around Tanev. Sharp still with it. Taves in front, and Tanev recovers to take it away. Hounded by Taves, he turns it over to Sharp. And now the return pass, and Hamhuis covered Jonathan Taves to deny the pass. And that puck flips along the line. It stayed in. Got up on its end and did not leave the zone. But now the Canucks have some room to work it ahead. Tanev for Daniel Sedin, who has forced this extra session. An assist from Henrik, and now passed it as a souvenir, maybe for Mike Johnson. Well, Luongo with a quick glove oh, took oh. it from me. Wow. He's still in the game, and even on the bench, he gets the Lou chance going on and salutes the crowd with it. Finally ready to grab one here. He wants, to, he wants to watch his work. Come ahead. There it is. Look at it. Taking it right away from me, just like when we played. It's not the first time he's taken one from his glove away from me. So the first minute of overtime and the first chance went to the Canucks. A close in opportunity for Chris Higgins. There's Kruger going to the bench. Didn't see the puck. And a little slow. The next guy up for Chicago. And Horns a face-off in the overtime. Kruger out there to take a neutral zone face-off, win it, and change. Here comes Hosa speeding in. Into the middle for Kane. Just a little more ice room for Patrick Kane. Johnny Aduya stepped up. He tries to center. Hosa swoops in to pick it up. Centers. Kane can't get the shot through. And it's kicked away by Bieksa. Now a short outlet pass of Bieksa. Sends it ahead, and Garrison leads the rush. Over the line is Henrik. Here comes Van Cooper with that shot by Weber off the side of the net. Now picked up by Henrik. Trying to force it through. That doesn't work. And Hosa, he's got Kane loose. Possible two on one. And getting back in a hurry to make the defensive play is Yannick Weber. Just in the nick of time. 
Both teams make changes as Ham Hughes patiently waits. Hansen out there now along with Santorelli. Ham Hughes and Tanev. Chris Tanev over the line. Watch there by Letty. Santorelli with the move. He's taken down and Brandon Saad up with the puck. With Shaw over the line. Here's Saad curling back. Tried to center. That's off a of Canuck. And now Vancouver's away. Santorelli with Hansen. Like Santorelli over the line. Curls and tries to duck away from the checking of Roosevelt unsuccessfully. Saad back and he's got some nifty moves. He's watched a few of the Patrick Keane moves, but at the end of a shift, he just cruises off. Back in, Ben Smith gets a turn in overtime with under two minutes left with Chris Versteeg. Versteeg is back to the hot shot, just went high. Big shot by Duncan Keith, and now Vancouver will move forward. Bieksa after it. He chips it by Keith into the zone, and Seabrook will go back as Bieksa peels off and heads to the Vancouver bench. 90 seconds still available in overtime. Jonathan Taves to work. Here comes Captain Sirius dropping it off for Sharp, and that doesn't work, and Vancouver will come back. Henrik and Daniel. And now ahead, it's Santorelli working in. Toronto as Santorelli looks skyward. Thought he had the game winner. And you want to talk about aggressive. That's three forwards out there for Vancouver. The Sedins and Santorelli along with Dan Hamhus. And he comes late with speed, splitting the defense. Sieber gets caught mid-pivot. Ends up going back short side and just can't create the angle. There's like a little room there to tuck it side. But moving too fast off the side of the net. Very close for Santorelli ending this one. Four game point streak, eight points in his last six, 12 in his last 11, and what a chance to win it for the Canucks. He'll take the drop in the Chicago zone, and there's another face-off win for Marcus Kruger, who's really worked on that part of his game, and he is 12th in the league in the face-off circle. One minute remaining in the overtime. One minute. The final minute of overtime, and what? Look out. Trouble for him. And from his back, he swept it away. Hosa was looking for a break. Now Rick Ryan, it's Keane turning on him, Hughes, but lost the puck. Along the boards, Hosa trying to get it back, and it's stolen by Daniel. He worked past Keane, and now he moved forward. Here come the Sedins over the line. Henrik took the drop, but it's offside with 30.5 on the clock. <laughs> Some desperate moments for Dan Hamhus, the only defenseman out there backing up and with the old heel pick. He's going down, no idea where it is. He's got to get it out of there as it's Marion Hosa looking for a breakaway. And Dan Hamhus has been very good tonight's game defensively. <laughs> now Seabrook. Canucks have Kessler and Higgins out for this final overtime shift. And here's Saad trying to bust through. Knocked to the corner by Garrison. And it will come outside the line, and it looks like we're indeed headed to a shootout. Andrew Shabo has other ideas. Shot backhand wide of the net. It'll come to Saad. Back to the point. Horn sounds before Seabrook can let it fly. And we will go to a shootout here in Chicago tonight. Ronta and Eddie Lack in the spotlight when we come back for the shootout. So we head to a shootout. Not John Tortorella's favorite part of the game, but sure he'll take the point tonight and would love to get another one against Dante Ronta and the Blackhawks. And you see Eddie Lack, not a ton of experience in shootouts, so gets into Roberto Luongo as Luongo's giving him little tips on the Chicago shooters. Well, only one Vancouver Canuck in the lineup tonight even has a shootout goal. That's Mike Santarelli, who will shoot. You've got guys like Sharp and Taves who have 
three shootout goals this season. Well, maybe most surprising, the guy out there right now going first, Patrick Kane is 0 for 7 on the year. That is hard to believe. 29 of 73 in his career, but has dipped under 40% with the slump this year. Let's see if Eddie Lack can make it continue. And he does. So Patrick Kane is 0 for 8. And Eddie Lack gives the Canucks an early advantage. Big save by Eddie Lack. He's beat on the move as Kane quick stick handle pull back inside. There's lots of net there. Doesn't get it up high enough. And Lack with a glove save. Here's Mike Santorelli. 1 for 5 on the year. With speed and he scores and Santorelli has the Canucks in front in the shootout. Good move by Santorelli there on Ranta. Looking to shoot 5 hole the whole way but he gets it back near the right leg. Right on through just off the ice. Perfect shot. Great look at it right there but back towards the opposite side. Here's Jonathan Taves 3 for 7 and Eddie Lack stops him. <laughs> So the Hawks are 0 for 2. And out comes Daniel Sedin with a chance to win it. A little fake poke check here, threw it out, and not a lot going on in that move for Jonathan Taves. Well, the Sedins don't usually take them. Let's see what happens here. Daniel in and Rata with the answer to keep the Hawks alive. Rata not biting on the backhand fake around the hash marks by Daniel Sedin. Stays right with them. Never really gets a good push the opposite way. Stays on his right edge and stays with the shooter. And now Patrick Sharp against Eddie Lack. And Sharp. The sharpshooter, fourth goal in seven. Just a dribbler here, backhand for him, trying to get it up. And just squeaks it off the body. But still finds the back of the net. Daniel stopped Henrik for a big win in Chicago. And Ranta stops him. And a little evidence of why we don't see the Sedins a whole lot in the shootout. Yeah, a little slow there, not a much width to that move, trying to get Ranta to bite and come back the other way. Ranta was having none of it. So we go another round, and it's Marion Hosa, just his second shootout attempt. And he blasts it off the post. A great angle from down here between the benches. Lots of room on that top glove side coming in. And Hosa has not beat from 15 feet away, but rings it off the post. And now for the first time this season, it's big Zach Cassian. One for three in his career. Cassian in. Shot fix. He's staying with the Deeks the whole way. Cassian tries to get him right there on the first pole, but he's nowhere near the outside of the net. He's a safe Ranta. Maybe neither team really with good scouting reports on the respective goaltenders. I mentioned Brandon Saad. He's got a bushel of full moves, and none of them fooled any lack. It's that quick stick. We saw it against Taves as well. You get in tight on lack. He's not afraid to throw out the poke check. And he does that to Saad, trying to pull it back across in front of him, and he's not, not going to let you pull it that close and well timed. Well, Yannick Weber's going to. Let's see. He's, he's going to take a break. And... and just resetting here. I don't know if. Something with the net off. Water bottle not where it should be, tucked in its holder. A little extra time for Yannick Weber. As he looks for a game winner here. And he is stuck by Ranta. The right idea though, I'm not trying to do anything fancy with it. You gotta shoot that one blocker side, you gotta get it above the height of the pad. And Weber doesn't do it, he puts it just a little bit too low for Ranta to make the save. Round number six, and it's Ben Smith who will take a turn. And Eddie Lack 
has been unflappable. Yeah. Eddie Lack's got his glove on a bit of a different angle. Glove up, elbow down, and it makes the top glove look a little different. You see it right there, right by his ear, and then brings it down and cuffs that one. It's a little bit different look for guys. Well, David Booth, another cutting chance to win it. Booth in, and Ronta stays with him. He was lit up on Saturday in Toronto, but he has yeah. really bounced back this week. And Ronta and Eddie Lack are putting on a show here in the shootout. I know you want to maybe just think about shooting the puck because he is dialed in on the Deeks. So it will be Chris Versteeg. Second shot for him this year. And another stop, or was that just high over? That's straight up and over. Trying to drag it across, open up the glove side. But again, watch the unique positioning of Lack's glove up by his ear, up by his ear. And oh, he does just get a piece of it to knock it over. Well, here's Zach Dolby. Haven't seen much of him tonight, and maybe he can be the hero. Walking in and a block stop. Ronta denies that. Dolby, good stick handles, trying to create something, but I tell you what, not much going on with these moves by Vancouver. So we head to the eighth round of the veteran Michael Hanzus. And a tone stop. And he lacks head. All the answers since that one goal. Not, not giving guys much to shoot at. Down here, not a lot of net on either goalie. So here's Ryan Kessler, 0 for 3 on the year. Will he be the hero tonight? Kessler scores! Ryan Kessler's got a game winner, and it's a comeback victory for the Vancouver Canucks, backstopped by Eddie Lack and Ryan Kessler providing the shootout deciding goal. Prior to the game, John Tortorella talked about how big a victory this could be. Looking back at April, and he comes up with a big road win in a tough building. 3-2, Vancouver wins.